So you have a PS4 controller and your haptic feedback motors are not working or there is some odd noise or some other malfunctions in them. Let's take a look how we can swap the motors fairly easily and cheaply. Uh, on this repair I used a controller that had a different fault so I took the spare parts from another controller. Let's start by opening the controller. There's only four screws in the back. They're Phillips screws. Then lift up the ribbon cable. Remember the orientation of the ribbon cable since it needs to be plugged in the same way. Uh, on this type, of, this is the original PS4 Sony controller. So on these types of controllers, you need to remove the whole chassis to access the motors or take them out. On different uh, third-party suppliers that are made, they, they may differ uh, that you don't need to disassemble the whole thing to get the motors out, but on the original one you need to. There's a second ribbon cable there. Be careful with these ribbon cables, they break easily. You need to remove this uh, in order to remove the PCB from the chassis. Before desoldering the wires, take a picture of the orientation of the wires so you can plug them back in or solder back in the correct way. That's a good uh, uh, habit to get into every time when you take something off, take a picture of how it was there so you can compare it once you are assembling it again. Well, the ribbon cable was stuck in the hole, so you need to make sure that the plastic tab is not blocking the hole. Okay, now we can access the motors and push them out. There is a small ad adhesive tape holding the motors in the socket. Take a screwdriver or something, you can use isopropyl alcohol to soften the adhesive if you want. It is fairly well stuck in there, but not too bad. Now we got the mo first motor out. And then the second one. Now keep in mind the motors are different, uh, the uh, other one has only one blade and the uh, other one has four, so put the correct motor to the correct place. Now we take some two-sided tape to glue them back in. Just put it same place where the old tape was, or the adhesive. And same thing with the other motor. This is there just to make sure that it stays in place. And these replacement motors has uh, also some kind of dampering material on the front so that it doesn't give up vibration hitting the actual controller chassis. Now we're ready to assemble this again. It's a good time also if there is any dirt or grime on the controller, this is a good time to clean it up a little bit. Also, if you have some kind of other fault, this is a good time to repair those also. Any dirt or grime near the analog sticks holes will cause a stickiness to the sticks or anything like that. It's a good time to clean it up. I use isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to clean the grime and dirt off the holes.
Now we can assemble this again. Remember the small ribbon cable comes through the hole. Then the actual screw that is holding this all together is the screw on the battery uh, tray. Now check that all the buttons are working, that there is not uh, misaligned or anything like that. Once that is done, well, all good. Then we are ready to solder back the motor wires. This is where the picture comes in handy, so that you remember which way the uh, plus and minus wires were. So plus my wire is the red one, and the minus wire connected to the ground is the black one. And there are uh, different ways on depending on the side you're working on. a bit tri tricky they're small wires and it, the contact points are small so I use a tweezer you can also use your hands depending on which feels better for you and after the soldering make sure that they're connected properly and uh, give them a little thug so that they don't separate from the board also a good idea to put some fresh shoulder solder wire if connection is not forming Now connecting back the battery, then the small ribbon cable for the USB port, that's where you're charging and the lightning comes. Now we are ready, just a little bit touch up cleaning around the buttons. just to make sure that we don't have any issues later with those. The chassis should go back without any excessive force. It will snap on. Then all we got left is the four screws in the back. I usually do this in a crisscross pattern so that uh, we don't apply too much pressure on just one side. So that if there is something misaligned or anything, it doesn't break anything okay now we are ready with the controller again and we are ready to joy enjoy the games again thank you for watching and hope we see you soon